You got the first shot. Why'd you waste another bullet? No, I wasn't sure. But with a gun, you better be sure. No sense throwing lead around wild, just hoping. I'm getting pretty good, huh? You're learning. Hey, watch this. Now, here's something I want you to learn and learn fast. Being good with a gun is nothing to be proud of or brag about or show off. For one thing, there might be somebody better than you. Being good with a gun is nothing great. It's just kind of necessary. Like eating. Sure, I, I know that, Russ. That's why Pa gave me the gun. He gave it to you for varmints and nothing else. Yeah, but like you said, sometimes it's necessary. But don't you go looking for trouble. You let it come to you if it has to. Not much chance of that around here. Around here, most men's guns are so rusty they don't even shoot. Maybe that's why I like it around here. Hey, you do like it around here, don't you, Russ? I mean, you ain't figuring on going back to Texas. Why do you ask? Well, I, I guess you're the best tan pa I ever had. I, I think so anyway. So does Edie. Does she say that? Well, sure, kind of. Anyway, the best shot, that's for sure. Well, I won't be around here long if don't get back to work. Come on, boy. Hey, wait a minute. Just one more draw, huh? You don't have to be a lightning draw for varmints. Well, sure you do. Like for a rattlesnake, maybe. Like that one there. That time you missed the first one. Yeah, I guess so. They tried to shoot too fast. Like I told you, no matter how fast the action, you got to get set for a second before you pull the trigger. And you ought to know. Hey, what are you doing down here, Pa? I hear shots. I want to find out about them. Seems I'm a little late. Is the lesson finished? We were uh, just fixing to go. When the wind shifts, you ought to take notice. The sound carries a whole lot farther than you'd think. We weren't trying to hide from you, Mr. Duncan. I don't know. This draw is the safest place for target practice, that's all. You know how the missus and I feel about gunfighting. I told you when I hired you. But you gave him the gun. For snakes and hawks and coyotes, not for men. Anybody wearing a gun better know how to use it. Not for the things you're teaching him, not to draw against another. A man's got to know how to protect himself. I don't want any gunfighting around here, and I don't want any gunfighters either. Hey, well, look, it wasn't Russ's fault, Pa. You get along. Go get the horses. Hey. I don't want you to teach any more of that stuff to the boy. He's got a mind of his own, Mr. Duncan. I reckon he has, but you don't have to cooperate with him. I don't want him to be too good with a gun. Up till now, I've had no complaints against you. Seems like you wanted to forget your reputation and start fresh. Well, I told you I did, I still do. All right, you've done a good job and you've stayed out of trouble. Keep it that way. Ma says you should drive me into town this afternoon in the buckboard and help me with supplies. Well, say, that'd be a real pleasure. Hey, good, I'll go with you. Well, don't you have some things to do here? What things? Well, I don't know. No, I don't have anything to do. I'll go with you, all right, Russ? Well, I can't think of any reason why you shouldn't. Oh, good. Russ? Yeah, he was down in the gully, teaching Claude with that gun again. Did you tell Edie to have Russ take her to town? Why, yes, seems usual. Well, next time, don't. Well, for land sakes, why not? I might have something for him to do around here. But you don't want her to go alone, do you? Claude ain't very responsible yet. I just don't want them being together so much. But it's only natural for young folks, Pa. He seems like a nice young man. You want your daughter to marry a gunfighter? Excuse 
Excuse me. You're awfully quiet today, Russ. A penny for your thoughts. <laughs> I'm afraid you'd be overpaying. <laughs> I'll bet you're thinking about that girl who works in Big Nick's saloon. Thinking about seeing her when we get into town. Maybe. Only your ma told me to stay close to you and not go wandering off to any saloons. You make it sound like a prison sentence. Well, I guess it would be, if I was much of a drinking man. Well, I give you permission to go anywhere you please. Well, then I reckon I'll stick with you. And it's the girl in Big Nick's? Oh, you're much prettier than she is anyway. <laughs> Why, thank you, Mr. Baker. Oh, nothing won't come right in the end. Is it Pa? Has he said something? Well, nothing that's going to change anything. Don't you worry about it. the truth. Ain't that right, Russ? Yeah, I reckon so, Arnold. <laughs> well, how are you, son? How's your pawn ma? Huh? All right, Mr. Hoffman. Good. Say, now, what's this you're packing here? I'm surprised his paw would allow that. Why not? He wears one. Russ does, so do you. Well, that's true. Though I don't know why. I can't remember the last time I fired it. Force a habit, I guess. Maybe the day will soon come when we can all take him off for good. Maybe. I hope so. Russ will buy a drink. Oh, thanks, Arnold. Some other time. I think I'll just wait for Edie. Oh, can't say as I blame you. <laughs> Mr. Hoffman? Yes, sir? I'll go with you. You'll go where? You a uh, drinking man now, son? Well... Well, Claude, I'll tell you, I'd admire to have your company and all, but the fact of the matter is that Big Nick over there, he don't like to have gunfighters in his place. <laughs> See you later, Russ. It's fine. Huh? Well, look, I got to try sometime. It ain't easy waiting to be grown up, is it? It's a lot better that way. A lot of things look different then. What things? Oh, taking a drink, wearing a gun. <laughs> Other things. You might as well settle down. She's gonna be a while. You know how women are. Women? Edie's just a girl. Hey, you called her pretty before, so did Arnold Hoffman, is she? Well, you've got eyes. Yeah, I guess I just never thought about it that way. I guess that's one of the things that looks different when you get a little older. It's one of them, all right. You, on the buckboard. Well, it is. Russ Baker. This is a surprise. Hello, Slick. You're a long way from home. I'm a long way from Texas. Mean it. You don't plan to go back. Any special reason? Just put all that behind me. You don't have to make excuses to me. I got no quarrel with you. I haven't seen him around before. 
Slick Everett from Texas. Slick Everett? <laughs> Gee, I didn't know you knew him, Russ. Well, I'd like to be as good as him someday. There ain't no good in him. Oh, no, I meant with a gun. You know, I'm sorry I taught you so much. Your pa's right. A man gets along better in this world if you don't handle a gun too good. You best forget it. But, Russ, you're good with a gun. Well, that don't make it right. Now, you listen to your pa, you hear me? Put that thing up. I should have made you leave it at home. Hey, Russ, is something wrong? No. I just wish he did hurry. <laughs> well, you know how women are. Now, you two take your fight outside. I had that back bar mirror freighted from Salt Lake. I won't have it broken now. Take your hands off me, you filthy hick. <laughs> Take care of you after I finish with this one. Now listen, stranger. This is a peaceful town. You can't just come in here and push people around. I go where I want and I do what I want. And you're not the one to stop me. Well, somebody's got to. I just don't like being pushed around, that's all. All right. You want to tangle with me. You got a gun. Use it. Don't do it, Arnold. You don't have to be brave. He'll do it. Unless he's yellow. Clear through. Mr. Hoffman ain't got a chance. Get in the store. Well? You gonna draw? Slick. Turn around. It's none of your business, Baker. Keep out of it. I told you once there ain't a town big enough to hold both of us. I reckon you forgot that. Oh, you're a liar! You... Ready, Slick? What's wrong with Russ and Edie? Russ killed a man. What? 
Yeah, a gunfighter named Slick Everett. You know, you've heard of him. Everett was going to gun down Arnold Hoffman over an argument they had in the saloon, and Russ stepped in and called him. All he was trying to do was to get Mr. Hoffman out of it. I knew this had come out of him. It's a good thing it happened before him and Edie got too serious. Look, he did it for Arnold Hoffman. He ain't no killer. Now you see why I don't want you fooling around with guns all the time. It changes a man. He always has to wonder if he can outdraw somebody else, somebody like a slick Everett. I don't want that happening to you. Look, Pa, you don't understand. Now don't argue. Unhitch the horse and then fetch some wood for your ma. so calm standing there. Like, like Paul would, shooting a snake or a squirrel. But it was a man he shot, Ma. I guess I don't know him at all. Well, you shouldn't be so surprised. It's exactly like your father warned you. Yes, I know, I know. Well, then it's a lesson for you. Be thankful it came before you married him. Look, Edie, it's not like And I... let it be a lesson to you too, young man. Now you go wash for supper. It's all ready, Pa. You better ring the iron. thank thee, Lord, for the bounty thou hast set before us this day, and we ask forgiveness for the sins we've committed. Amen. Just stay out the month, if it's all the same to you. Then I'll, I'll go back to Texas. You've been a good hand, but maybe it's just as well. Pa, you ain't treating us right. He ain't done nothing wrong. Claude. All he did was stop Arnold Hoffman from pulling out a rusty old gun and get killed doing it. You get up and go to your room. Why, he ain't done nothing worse than doing killing a rattler. Didn't you hear me? I reckon I better not even stay out the month. It's all the same to you. Do whatever you like. I'll have your pay ready. supper. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Russ is leaving. Pa was wrong this time. Russ had to do it. Somebody had to. When? When's he leaving? Right now. Horse is saddled and he's in the bunkhouse getting his things. I'm going with him.
want to go with you. You belong here. Help me mourn, Paul. Oh, Russ, You please. go with me and you wind up drifting from place to place. With no more belongings than a $20 horse. Stay here. You'll be a cowman like your pa and Arnold Hoffman. They're both fine men. But, Russ, I don't want to be like my pa and Arnold Hoffman. I want to be like you. Or Slick Everett, maybe? Anyway, what would I do with a kid tagging along? Now, go on back to the house and let me be. You heard me. Go on. Get. I'm sorry, Russ. I was wrong. I'll go with you if you want me to. Your Paul may be right, you know. No, he's not. I know he's not. You suppose it'll always be like this? Never to move on? Never been able to settle down? Become part of things? Oh, Russ, I don't care. As long as I have you. Well, I think I can promise you that. Then we'll manage the rest somehow. We come to see Russ. Where is he? He's in the bunkhouse. Hey, Russ is leaving. He's in the bunkhouse getting his things. Russ leaving? I was afraid of something like that. Claude, fetch him for us, will you, son? Mac, you're making a mistake. Russ done it for me. He saved my life. Didn't anybody tell you? Yes. Yes, I guess they did. Well, don't that mean anything to you? I guess I wasn't listening very well, Arnold. Well, we ain't going to let you send him away. That's why we come. After what happened, the boys here and me and some of the rest of us, we got together and decided this town's big enough now. We ought to have a marshal. Don't you agree? That seems sensible. Well, sure it makes sense. And since being easy with the guns, a trick a marshal has to have, we figure that Russ here is our man. With him on the job, there won't be much trouble in this town, that's for sure. What about it, Russ? I'm afraid not, Arnold. Why not? Being easy with a gun ain't the right reason for picking a marshal. What do you mean, son? A lot of fellas can handle a gun. That don't mean that just any gunfighter would make a good peace officer. Now look, you hammerhead, it ain't the gun that matters, it's the man that counts. That's what we want, I just didn't know how to say it, that's all. Well, shucks, you ought to know we like and respect you. Otherwise, we wouldn't have thought of it in the first place. Well, that's nice of you, Arnold. But everybody don't feel that way. Well, who don't? He means me, Arnold. Russ, I couldn't see the man in you for looking at that gun hanging at your hip. I was all fired set against gunfighters, but I was wrong about you. <laughs> Maybe you'd better ask him again, Arnold. Maybe you'd better ask both of them. Looks like it's going to be that way now. <laughs> 